Well, time now on four to pull up a chair and enjoy the magic of some animation at Cambridge. major themes of the Cambridge Animation Festival, which opens next Tuesday, is storytelling. Now, of course, not all animated films actually tell a story, but many of them do, and that's our theme for tonight's programme. Well, we start with a, a film from Holland, which is a country that's produced a considerable amount of interesting and inventive animation. One of the major Dutch animators is Gert van Dijk. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And he was closely involved in this particular film. As in all storytelling films, it's the content of the film that's important rather than the actual animation technique. Well, this film tells the story simply of a, a man's life, but in a very odd way. And the title's rather odd, too. It's called, He Almost Clutched His Hand. Well, at least that's what the Dutch translators tell us. Here it is. He saw the light. And in the light, he saw the things. The first things he saw first. The nipples of his mother. The buttons on the waistcoat of his father. Bone teething rings. And pet dogs of plastic. The rest of the world he winked at for the present. But when he came outside, his eyes grew big with wonder. Two cherries in the street, and millions on a tree. Big brutes of dogs. A wheelbarrow, and another wheelbarrow, with four wheels, and with people inside, and no one in front or behind. As long as his shutters were open, the procession never stopped. Schoolmasters and schoolmistresses, Buskers, bobbies, doctors and pharmacists, ladies and gents, dollars and cents. He climbed from school to school, and all sorts of things happened. Too many things, in fact. Too many to recount. Still, some memories are strong. Like that walk he took with his father. By then, he was well on his way through school reading scholarly books of which he enjoyed the smell. His father was not yet old, but growing ever more silent, reading his newspaper mostly and the incoming bills. So there they were together, walking a sandy trek towards the city, where in a dear dead shop, his father wanted to buy a pair of low-priced shoes for him, his son. It was summer. The trees were soaring to the sky and shedding an early yellowing leaf. Although the subject of their conversation was unimportant, it should be mentioned here, being a subject after all. And indeed, they were talking about new shoes, about how they smelled and how they creaked and how lovely they could shine with classy wrinkles and filmy leather. They chuckled with delight and each in turn put the right word in the right place. He did not look at his father, but almost clutched his hand. All that learning he did in the schools made him as learned as a master, but that was not his fault. No more than he could help being appointed chief executive. What of or where is not the point right now. Just the old song of Tinker, Taylor, Richmond, Foreman, Beggerman, thief. Two telephones stood on his desk, and in the office next to his, a lady and a gentleman typed his words. He flew to Spain and to Kuwait, spoke each lingo well and straight, and shook hands with people in high places. All of this took somewhat longer than this tale suggests, but that doesn't matter. For even to his own mind's eye, telephones, desks, Kuwait, this pageantry of chiefdom swept past with gale force 10. One day, however, he returned to his land of yore. He sat on the garden bench, a 
on which he'd sat before, when he was still a little boy. Behind him was the White House front, with the lime trees in a row. No road or street ran past the house. A sandy path led up to it. His thoughts went back to school, to church and cross, to evenings and summers, to oats and hay and grass, and to a tree with yellowing leaves. But mostly, he thought, of his dear dead father, of how magnificent he was, lying in state under glass, in his coffin of elm wood. A little strange, though, those shoeless feet, stiffly erect. Christ, how he loved the old things and the old people that had passed like ships in the night. For years he kept on busying himself in the pursuit of wealth with telephones and blah, blah, blah. Until there came a day when once again all that had ever happened, indeed his life, rushed like a fearful storm past his mind's eye. This was, he knew, the final show. And there was room for only one last thought. Thank God, he thought, that at times I have loved. Then he smelled Elmwood and closed his eyes for good. Well, our next film is from Russia. It's made by an animator called Ivanov Vano, and it's based on a poem by the Russian poet Mayakovsky. It's about the American domination of Cuba back in the 1930s, which is when the film was actually made. It takes as its theme the historical reality of the American presence in Latin America, and it's very much an anti-colonial film. The film's called Black and White, and here's the last part of it, which I'm afraid is all that's available in this country at the moment.
И надо же случиться, чтоб как раз тогда Королю сигарному Генри Клей Пришел белей, чем облаков тогда Величественнейший из сахарных королей I beg your pardon, Mr. Black. Почему и сахар белый-белый должен делать черный негр? О, о. Черная сигара не идет в усах вам? О, о, а Она для негра с белыми усами. И если вы любите кофе с сахаром, Oh. То сахар из войки делать сами. Oh. 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 Негр посопел подбитым носом, поднял щетку, держась за скулу. Откуда знать ему, что с таким вопросом? С таким вопросом? Надо обращаться в Коминтерн, в Москву. There are going to be several prominent animators and directors at the Cambridge Festival. And one of them will be Chuck Jones, who made all those Roadrunner films, and also directed several of the cartoons featuring Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck and others. Well, Chuck Jones is a really inventive director, and we're going to give you a brief glimpse of one cartoon of his which almost seems to be a commentary on the animator's art. The character is Daffy Duck, and the film is called Duck Amuck. Here's just a section from it. Musketeers, they shall sample my blade. Touche. <coughs> Musketeers, hmm? my guard, hmm? my blade. Hey, whoever's in charge here? The scenery. Where's the scenery? <laughs> Our minds 
When you think how many of these cartoons were churned out every year by the major cartoon studios like Warner Brothers, Paramount, Columbia and so on, it's amazing how good many of them are. It's also worth remembering that, contrary to what one might think, these films were not made primarily for children. Well, we close our programme with a, a film by a very distinguished Belgian animator called Raoul Serve. He's made quite a few films and this is one of his best known. Its title is Harpia. It's a, a rather chilling and sometimes disturbing story. And it has a, a sense of heightened reality and a dreamlike quality, as you'll see.
Coco. Coco. Well, that's where we leave you tonight. There'll be two more programs.